This week we're trying out different combinations of ink and shimmer. First off, we've got Pelican Smoky Quartz with Super Russet, Bay State Blue with Turquoise, Daikokuten with Duo Blue Green, Flame with True Blue, Autumn Oak with Spring Green, Ukikusa with Flamingo Pink, Con Pecky with Yellow, Emerald of Shavor with Pearl. This ink has shimmer already, but we're going to try boosting it. And last, Fuji with Duo Violet Copper. Now let's get these samples into vials and the shimmer into the vials. And to do that, I think we really need a montage. And so now we begin the brave new world of live commentary. This room is going to sound a little different than my other recordings because this is just a big untreated room with no carpet and it's going to sound very boomy. So we'll start off with the smoky quartz with the, I believe, russet. And I'm doing this with a glass dip pen because it's easy to clean and easy to dip. Let's see what this looks like. So, getting some shimmer there and what's dried, but let's wait to see how it looks once that's dry. It's interesting, it comes across more like a, a sheening ink because the color of the shimmer is very, very close to the color of the ink itself. Without that contrast, it just, it, it looks more <clears throat> like, a, like a traditional sheen ink, not, not the fountain pen sheen, what, what we call that, where you have, um, you know, something uh, like this, Vinta Dugong Bung Hao. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, or if you can see it here where it turns that like in like super deep red purple um, on what is otherwise a blue ink or, or this KWZ Sheen Machine, which again turns turns purple or this Ackerman whoop, knocked over the ink. Perfect. Rule number one of fountain pinning always put the cap back on. Rookie mistake. Um, but yeah, what I, what I say is sheen like, um, like if you're doing like a, a traditional black ink or printing where the, it just sort of reflects the light differently is kind of what I mean. It's a long winded way of saying just, it, it, it seems as though the ink just is shiny once it's dry. Um, so uh, interesting. Um, I don't, I don't know that it's worth the effort to maintain and shake the pen in order to get that effect. Next up, we've got a little bit of a wild card here. This is the Bay State Blue with the turquoise. This will be, this will be fun because Bay State Blue is both a ink with interesting characteristics. Um, for those who don't know, it's it's a very, very nice, very saturated blue, but you can tell by this bottle, it stains quite a bit. 
stains pretty much anything it touches. So while that Pelican smoky quartz wasn't a big deal that I spilled it all over my desk, uh, if I spill this everywhere, then it definitely will be a big deal. And so something that I'm noticing right away is sort of a clumpiness here. Uh, and I don't know whether that's due to the the reaction of the base state ink itself, which has, like I said, many interesting characteristics, um, or whether that's just this particular um, powder just isn't doesn't mix well with the, the water. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing this with dip pens and not sticking it into a fountain pen immediately. Uh, yeah, but base state blue is notorious for staining pens and staining hands and anything else that it comes in contact with. I ruined one of my first uh, fountain pens. My first fountain pen with a gold nib, in fact, it was a Pelican M250 that I purchased back in 2005, 2000, no, 2004. I was still in school, still in college, didn't have any money. Uh, and I, I bought the pen from Pam Braun and uh, I put Bay State Blue in it back before people kind of knew that it stained as much as it did. Um, and it was a clear, it was a, an amber demonstrator. And it wasn't, it was like that for 18 years, 19 years, until recently somebody happened to mention that isopropyl alcohol will take it out. And so I was able to get about 95% of um, the Bay State Blue staining out. Uh, however, previously when I was trying to clean it, I got a little aggressive and, and cracked the cap a little bit. So it's not back to perfect shape. Rule number one, cap the pen, cap the ink. All right, let's give that a second to dry and then we'll see how it looks. All right, this should be dry. Uh, no, not dry yet. If you want to know what that piece of tape is, that is my focus point. That's where I've set the camera to focus. And so I just left it in manual. And yeah, this is a similar situation to the brown above, except I I'm not seeing any shimmer. Bay State itself typically is a very matte finish ink. So I'm taking it off camera to get a closer look. Yeah. Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work at all. Uh, the I don't see any shimmer whatsoever. I don't know whether it just clumped up and sat at the bottom, whether the Bay State is so staining that it stains the um, powder so that it doesn't shimmer. You know, what would typically reflect the light is just coated with a layer of base state so you can't see anything. Um, but yeah, that didn't work at all. What's next? Also off camera, I went and got some isopropyl alcohol and cleaned up that base state before I spread it everywhere. I also had to dunk the pin because it had actually stained the glass pin blue. Okay, so this should be an interesting one. So this is um, a Pilot Limited Edition ink, Daikokuten. Daikokuten. Um, it's, a, it's a yellow that I don't use very often because it's um, very, very pale. So you've got to have extremely white paper and uh, have a pen that wets. That's quite a wet writer in order to have it be visible, otherwise it's you just can't see it on the page. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and give this guy a shot. Did I spell it right? Daiko Kutin. With green. You can kind of see it here as I get to the end of the line as the 
the pin gets drier and that it's getting harder and harder to read. So we, we do get some shimmer there, but it just comes across, it just comes across, I guess the green and the yellow are similar enough. What did I put in there? This is the du the dual green blue, I guess the, it tends to just kind of brown, I take that yellow, sort of muddy it up a little bit and add a little bit of shimmer. Unlike the base state, you can, you can see the shimmer, but I don't know if aesthetically it's something that you'd want. Okay. Next up, we've got flame. with true blue so i'm excited to try this one because number one blue and orange are complementary colors directly across from each other on the color wheel i don't know whether these particular shades of orange and blue are directly across but... so it should give some nice contrast and also there this colors of the University of Florida, my alma mater. That's interesting. I can, I can already see that there's something going on interesting with this one. And while there is an effect like the Daikokuten of changing in the color tone when it's got more shimmer in it you know the, the blue will you know, when you're mixing paint we'll use the term neutralize so it'll bring a more purely saturated color a color that has a very strong hue um, and will bring it towards the center sort of make it more earthy and so you definitely see that here where this the blue shimmer um, cancels the orange and brings it down to sort of a, an earthier color, but that's still super cool. Yeah, that's that's really neat. I, I think we got a winner here. Wow. That ends up, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that, that paint that you get frequently on like auto, uh, like an auto paint, where as you look at it from different angles, the, the color changes. That's really, that's really what this looks like to me because it, it kind of smoothly goes from this warm orange to like almost a purple and then you get the pure blue coming through. Yeah, that was worth the experiment by itself. I, w I already liked Flame. Flame was one of my standout colors from uh, this year's Inkvent calendar, and that's really neat. I'll probably mix up a, a batch of that. All right, next up we've got Autumn Oak, which is uh, similarly, it's a it's a desaturated. It's a very interesting color. I bought it this autumn. Uh, some of the swabs made it seem more brown, whereas in actuality, it's more of an, an orangey red. Uh, and I I wanted a warm brown, so I'm hoping that um, this green shimmer 
Uh, which one did we add to this guy? What's it called? Spring Green. So we've got Spring Green and Autumn Oak. I'm hoping that this, that, that green will neutralize the reddish and turn this into a, like a fall brown, sort of something like, like leaves turning during that part of the, that early part of fall where there's still chlorophyll in the leaves. It's still kind of green, um, but the, you know, those other colors are coming through the, and it's getting orange or more and more orange. Okay, what is this? This is pretty cool too. Here's my towel. So you can see there's the, the flame with the blue shimmer in it. So this one, the green isn't really popping out at me directly. Like when I, I can I can see the shimmer, but the fact that the shimmer is green isn't directly popping up. Now what I do notice is that it is neutralizing the the orange red of the ink itself so it does come out more earthy in those spots interesting i'm gonna i'm gonna add a touch more green to that and see what happens Well, they say go big or go home. I'm already home, so let's go big, see what happens. All right. So that has definitely impacted the color of the ink. Like it is, that green has really neutralized at this point, the orange, the brownish orange, and pushed it into that sort of brown family. Like I would definitely not call that orange anymore. Yeah, that has, that has some potential there. Let's see what, let's see what happens when it dries. Okay, now I'm kind of getting the effect that I was originally hoping for, where the shimmer is definitely green in over a, a warmer ink, but that amount of shimmer pushed the ink into a sort of a not terribly appealing brown, I'd say. Okay, we'll take another, we'll take a closer look at that later. We'll take a, look, a closer look at all of these later under the microscope. All right, so here's an interesting one. This is gonna be Ukikusa. This is a very nice green with a flamingo pink shimmer, right? Yeah, flamingo pink. Oh, that's interesting. You can even kind of see it. It's like a, sometimes I see that scheme referred to as venom. Okay, so it's had a few minutes to dry, and this one's really interesting, and it it came out way different than I expected. So 
the where the shimmer is the thickest to me at least it doesn't read as um, pink it actually tend it, it turns out to make it more blue so it turns into this sort of turquoise bluish green and that it just sort of as the shimmer runs out in the dip pen because the shimmer falls to the bottom um, and you get more and more of the pure ink color as you write. That's not something that will happen with a fountain pen. Um, but it turns back to this, this yellow green. But here at the beginning, it's, it's definitely a, a blue green that turns into back to that yellow green at the end. That's not at all what I expected. Uh, so this is, that's cool. All right, and then here we have another minimizing or neutralizing one. And I'm a little concerned about this one. I don't know if that's coming across on camera here, that uh, this yellow is very clumpy. Like up here at the top, it's just yellow stuck to the side of this canister this vial so I I don't know that I would recommend the yellow shimmer ever for a fountain pen that's I don't know we'll see how it comes out here yeah that yellow I don't know if you can see it there on my fingertip, but it's just, it, it just clumped to the side of the canister and the vial and transferred right to the pin. So I don't know that I would use that yellow shimmer for anything. We'll see how it looks on here once it dries. Just sort of disappears. There's there's a bit of shimmer, but it doesn't read as any color. It's just a little bit of added shimmer to this otherwise very nice ink. All right, I don't think that worked very well. All right, now we've got Emerald de Chavour, which already had shimmer. And then I added Pearl to it. And this is gonna be fun, because Emerald de Chavour is a sheening ink as well. So it's got a high concentration of dye in it. Okay, so that definitely pumped up the shimmer that you get on this ink, especially there at the beginning. It's J. Herbon is pretty conservative with how much shimmer that it typically adds to its inks, and so that that bumps it up to sort of its contemporaries that are adding shimmer. You know, I, I would say that's as much shimmer as like Ferris wheel press or diamine shimmer or anything like that. That's cool. I'm interested to see what that swatch looks like when it's dry under the microscope. And then finally, we've got some Sailor Fuji, which this one will be very interesting because it's a dual shading ink that I've added 
a purple slash brass, what's it called? Duo violet brass too. So this one could be pretty cool. It looks really cool in the bottle. I don't know if that's coming across in focus, but like the so I mean some of these mica powders seem to behave better as ink additives than others. And this violet brass, I like the way that it's flowing. And also the, the true blue and that flame. That was a definite winner. These sailor inks are just such a joy to use and write with. Um, the, the Fuji and also the Ukikusa are both sailor inks. I think technically from the Manyo series. There's wonderful. Very, very nice inks. Very well behaved. They flow nicely. They're just great. I'm going to put this, I'm going to do a swatch of this one as well because I want to see if the dual shading what that looks like and you've got to really lay it on pretty thick to get that shading effect with this ink so let's see how this looks that's going to take a while to dry I'll wait for that to dry. I'm gonna go wash my hands. So I'm looking at these guys here. So the Emerald de Chivore, yeah, ended up being just more shimmer. Uh, and then the Fuji with Violet Brass. That's interesting because you've got this really nice warm Shimmer. I mean, it, that happens all the time. Like in any time you have a gold or copper shimmer in another ink. So it's not anything special about this particular purple violet. But I was looking through it and it reminded me a lot of something from the 22 calendar Dye Mine Memory Lane. I'll take it out so you can see it. So that's kind of a similar purple, like a dusky purple. Uh, the, the sheen is different on this one. So this is definitely like a, a pure silver sheen. Like, whereas this violet brass has a, a warmer sheen. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. So the rest of this video is just music and close-ups. I'll leave you to it. This video has been really long. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like that, if you like my rambling, or if you like the shorter videos. Anyway, until next week, thanks for watching.